On alternate Earth 138, Norman Osborn is President of the United States of America, where there's no justice, so there's no peace. As the radioactive suicide machine, Hobart Hobie Brown, aka Spider Punk, led his spider army of stepped on, beat down, hard luck losers against President Osborn and his neurosensitive organic mesh from Oscorp that's infused with members of the Thunderbolt department called Venom to fearlessly root out the weak and those who undermine the power and authority of his established system to keep America strong and great again. Unfortunately for the law, they didn't count on 15,000 watts of punk rock from an army of amps set to 11 that was more than enough to weaken the symbiotes that despised the power of intense sonic waves, which contributed in their great defeat and the death of their leader. As Spider-Punk revealed, he is the anarchic that rock and rolled over the government for freedom. However, unbeknownst to him, he will be selected by Superior Spider-Man, Otto Octavius, to join the Spider-Army from across the multiverse to fight against an extremely powerful and terrifying family known as the Inheritors that reign over reality itself and are immortal by sustaining themselves on feeding from the life force of heroes and villains that bear a totem and connection, most notably spider totems, as they travel across parallel universes for their great hunt to chase down spider men and women and devour them, which in point, their father, Solus, easily and shockingly sucked the life essence out of cosmic spider-man who possessed the god of light, known as the Enigma Force. Before the Inheritors hunted our heroes to the brink of extinction, However, luckily for our heroes, one of the inheritor siblings named Karn had returned after centuries in exile only to denounce his family and join the side of righteousness as he aided our heroes to victory. Thereafter, everyone would head back to their respective reality. Now back home, Spider-Punk and his band, the Spider Slayers, would rock the town with an awesome rock concert until the show was suddenly shut down by that vulture, Mr. Tombs, owner of Tombstone Records after he required the rights to free media net out of spite and now want a hefty sum of money for others to use it. But not before knowing the rebellious spider punk wouldn't take that line down. So Mr. Toombs already had his private army on hand to combat any resistance to his demand. Nevertheless, spider punk welcomed the challenge and an all out battle commenced against the record label in the marsh pit as when out of nowhere spider ham 2099 was sucked in earth 138 after being chased by duckbot but quickly hogtied by spider punk's web and next brought to the gateway to the entire multiverse on earth 001 called the web of life and destiny for explaining to do but not before spider punk met a version of his world's deceased rock icon gwen stacy moreover Spider Punk headed back to his world with a team of Spider Heroes, only to encounter Doctor Doom 2099. Because ever since, our web heroes somehow damaged the gateway between multiverses after constantly traveling through it, they ended up tangling the threads, causing realities to bleed together with one another. So now, our heroes are tasked with finding a way to stop it before it becomes irreparable. Proceeding this, now back at the gateway station, now called Loom World, our heroes there were able to snap the strands of the gateway web back into place. Unfortunately, now causing our web warriors to be separated from the others and stranded across the realities of the multiverse with damaged communication and teleportation bracelet devices. However, luckily for Spider-Punk, he remained in his world for the exception of the annoyed Lady Spider, May Riley, and Spider-Girl Anya Corazon, who were now stuck there, but later used the Kuriyama Shield's giant leopardin mech power supply and Spider-Punk's guitar skills to rekey and jump their bracelets since the bracelets were only out of sync and not damaged. Moreover, they joined forces with other web warriors to fight and defeat an army of alternate electrodes who were accidentally released. And thereafter, Spider-Punk would be once again tasked with jumpstarting the gateway, but this time to unleash the full electric capacity of the electrodes across the whole gateway web that was damaged as Gwen Stacy got in on the action to save the multiverse from certain doom. And when the smoke was cleared, our web warriors were once again trying for the evil before they returned to their realities. As time progressed on Earth 138, Spider Punk will put the beat down on the Asgardian Eric Masters, better known as Thunderstrike, after the Red Skull sent him to conquer that region. When suddenly, Thunderstrike was vaporized by Kane the Conglomerator, who traveled from the year 2099 to retrieve Spider Punk, since in the future, his company, Kane Co. Inc 
owns the life rights and all intellectual properties associated with one Herbert Brown, aka Spider Punk, and now needed the punk rock Spidey who, for innovation purposes. Nevertheless, Kang did bring an army for the hostile web warrior with a foul mouth, which this time would have him overwhelmed by the attacking time intruders. So Spider Punk contacted Carl Morgenthau, aka Captain Anarchy, who was empowered by the Super Insurgent Serum for assistance. Subsequently, Kang's minions would catch up with Spider-Punk and inadvertently be attacked by the Annihilation Wave, thus giving Spider-Punk time to retrieve a cassette tape from Captain Anarchy that would eventually cause Robert Bruce Banner to transform into the incredible punk hawk Adam Bomb, who came and smashed everything that wasn't his ally, especially Kang the Collaborator, that suffered a brutal defeat at his hands before Kang made his escape back to the future. Following this, another portal will open, but this time, Spider-Woman would emerge from it to call upon Spider-Punk on another multiversal adventure to save reality as Spider-Punk himself next went after Norman Osborn aka Spider-Norman on Earth 44145 to also recruit him for the mission. Furthermore, it will be discovered that Otto Octavius of Earth 616 unknowingly turned on the inheritance cloning technology that ended up growing stronger new bodies with their same persona templates downloaded inside them and now Merlin, Verna and their scientist brother Gen X were free from their cloning tanks on the poisonous radioactive prison planet to wreak havoc once again upon the spider army of the multiverse as they next went on to restore the life of their siblings Bricks, Bora and Demos for the grand family reunion when they finally resurrect their beloved father Solus which will soon be realized leaving our heroes specifically Miles Morales with no choice but to call upon the Cosmic Enigma Force which would eventually find him worthy to wield his power and become the new Captain Universe as he went on to eventually destroy Solus with Leopard's powerful sword Vigor while our web warriors managed to capture the remaining inheritors and thereafter transfer their consciousness to the clone bodies in the form of children without the recollection of their past life moreover the Enigma Force will go on to leave Miles Morales' body. Following this, our heroes will pay tribute to the fallen inheritor Karn, who prior converted to the good side to aid our heroes defeat his own evil family, but would tragically perish at the hands of his sister Verna, as Spider-Punk gave his eulogy to the fallen hero to bid their old friend a final goodbye, before everyone took the portals back to the reality to go on home. Later back in his world, Spider-Punk would get a sudden assist from Miles Morales who was uncontrollably traveling through parallel dimensions by a mysterious figure called Spider-Zero. So before Miles could finish helping Spider-Punk take on the Universal Church of Truth who wanted to bathe them in the light of truth with the Holy Gym, Miles was suddenly pulled out of Spider-Punk's world. Preceding this, the Russian fascist Kraven and his hunters would start shooting up Harlem's community center up until Spider-Punk and Captain Anarchy showed up to save the day from the Nazi punks who now have futuristic weapons to chase away the low income residents. Nonetheless, our heroes would defeat them and send them packing before they went on to investigate one of the high tech weaponry which Spider-Punk would take to the genius Riri to look at at the spider base. Moreover, Riri would conclude Craven and his hunters were being supplied by a third party who had a lot of resources. Fortunately enough, they would get more answers when Craven and more of his hunters would once again return to cause chaos. However, this time, Riri would join the team in her Iron Riot armor to help take down the criminal menaces that was later found out to be pawns sent to get rid of all the poor folks in the urban area so the wealthy could move in to improve housing and attract new businesses as they displaced the current inhabitants. However, suddenly, Craven released a canister that caused the explosion in the wall. And when the smoke was cleared, the also hired mercenary Anthony Masters, better known as Taskmaster, emerged to aid Craven and give our heroes a real challenge since he could accurately mimic any fighting move he sees for the first time. Surprisingly after, Carmella Khan, aka Stretch, next showed up, assisting Spider-Punk, Captain Anarchy, and Riot Heart to officially form the team that will only be known as the Spider-Band, who went on to defeat Taskmaster, Craven, and the Hunters. However, in a last ditch of redemption, Craven blew the place up, hoping to end the team. 
only for Reinhardt to cast a protective shield over the band. So the team next discovered there was an old Osborne black site underneath the community center, full of outdated high-tech weaponry with a system that was connected to a whole network dedicated to spying on citizens and committing other atrocities of human rights violations. So the spider band next headed to Washington DC and spider punks spider van to the central hub that was being fed information from other black site bases around the country which co-processes the data. Following this, the spider band will be attacked by the Marauders, a mutant Japanese biker gang consisting of Sunfire, Armor, and Dakin Sama while entering the city of Philadelphia for a pit stop. When they ended up encountering the blind superheroine Mateya Murdoch, aka Daredevil, the drummer of Philly, who they would next join forces with while leaving Riri and Cat behind as reinforcement and to also watch over the Spider Van and Spider Punk's guitar. So the trio could battle, the club promoter and ticket impresario turned free for all eye gouger Wilson Frisk, aka Kingpin, that prior hired the Marauders to assault the Spider Band. Nevertheless, our trio who was temporary going by the name Daredevils defeated Kingpin and his goons. Moreover, the Spider Band would head out and make their way to their destination of Washington DC beneath the Osborne Memorial where the bunker that held the hub was located only to shockingly encounter a decapitated symbiote Osborne inside a mech suit and his hired help Eugene Thompson as Officer Venom, Robert Reynolds as War Sentry and the return Taskmaster who engaged them in an epic battle for the ages where our heroes were on the verge of suffering a humiliating defeat until that is Adam Bomb showed up smashing War Century with the spider van as he was also accompanied by Daredevil who together formed the complete version of the spider band and took on Osborne along with his hired mercenaries to end the fascist racist communists from taking over the United States government as Reinhardt hijacked War Century's armor and combined it with hers while next supercharged spider punk's guitar so he could blast the venom symbiote right off of Osborne's head which resulted in his instant death, thus causing the mercenaries to retreat in panic. As the day was finally saved by the world famous Spider Band. That being said, Hobart Hobie Brown is Marvel Comics Spider Punk.